Hello everyone and thanks for visiting Bluebeam Back to Basics. Today we'll be talking about PDF file manipulations. For those of you I have not met personally, you can reach me at that phone number and email address and we encourage you to visit our website where you can learn all about our Bluebeam training program. In today's video we're going to take a look at the stapler tool, the role it plays in the open and save as commands, We'll take a look at taking a large combined multi-page PDF and exploding it into separate sheets. We'll take a look at taking many, many separate sheets and combining them together into a single PDF. And we'll pay special attention to working with digitally signed PDFs with both the combine and stapler options. Now you may or may not be aware of the stapler utility that comes with Bluebeam. It's possible that your system administrator has chosen not to deploy the utility and therefore you may not have it. But if that's not the case, you should be able to go into your Windows system and go to the Bluebeam software option and when you look inside of there you'll see an option for Bluebeam stapler. Now it's a utility that is completely separate from the Bluebeam review program but they work hand in hand. So if I launch it here, it will launch the stapler program, and there's lots of things that I can do with the stapler all by itself. For the moment, I just want to take a look at edit and settings so that you can see the file types. It is currently set to convert if I choose to attempt to do that. It's got active converters for AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Image, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and then something called MIME, a catch-all for anything that isn't one of the others. And what that stands for is Multipurpose Internet Mail Extension, MIME. It's an international standard for manipulating specific documents. Now, I typically don't use the stapler by doing the method that I just displayed. Typically what I do is I have the stapler launch as I'm doing some particular file manipulation activity and I'll show you that as we move forward. Let's start by taking a look at how the stapler interacts with the file open command. So if I go to file and open or I right click and hit open. Either one of those actions is going to launch the Microsoft Windows Explorer application. Now it's pointing to a folder that has some PDF files in it, but I want to open non-PDF files into Bluebeam. And if I go up a level where I know I've got multiple documents that are not PDF files, nothing's showing up. That's because when you use Bluebeam, it just naturally assumes you want to work on PDF files. And as such, when you do a file open, there is a filter in the lower right hand corner that is preset to always anticipate that you're going to be looking for PDF files. If that's not the case, you know, it's got a chevron there. Just click on it and change it to one of the other options. And I'm going to tell it to look for everything. Now I can see my comma separated files, my AutoCAD, my MicroStation, Microsoft Publisher, Excel spreadsheets, all those things that are not PDF files. And what will happen is if I choose something like this Word document here and I choose open, it is going to call the stapler utility when I say OK and it's going to convert a copy of that document from the original Microsoft Word format to PDF file format. All it's waiting for is for me to tell it where to put the new PDF file and what to call it. I like exactly where it is so I'm just going to hit save. And you see here this little symbol that the stapler is actively converting that document. And now we have a PDF of it. It would do the same exact thing if I opened up a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet or many, many other file format types. In fact, I can do multiples at one time. If I go back and do another file open, again, it defaults to the PDF filter. If I change that back to everything and I grab an Excel spreadsheet and let's say I do a control and I grab a Visio document at the same time and I come down here and I hit open. It's again launching the stapler application and it's asking me what to do with these files. It's asking me where to put them. It's asking me what name to give the newly created PDF file. And the assumption here is that I want to create one single multi-page PDF, but that may not be the case. I may want a separate PDF for each source file. If that's the case, I would change it to this option and tell it that I want one output file 
per source document. So I'll end up with two PDF files instead of just one where there are multiple pages. Now here it launches the stapler for greater detail and I can see that it's identified this as a Microsoft Excel file and it's identified this as a Visio file and it's telling me what to anticipate when I hit the staple button. I like everything I see, I'm just going to say go. And now we have our converted Word document, our converted Excel spreadsheet, and our converted Visio document. But the stapler works the other way as well. I'm going to close everything and open up a new file. Now this is a PDF file that I received from an outside source. It's not a Word document, but I want it as a Word document. So once again, I can leverage the capabilities of the stapler. If I go to File and Save As, Again, Bluebeam presumes I want to save it as just a, a differently named PDF file. If that's not the case, I can click on that filter and now I've got a whole menu of things that I can convert this PDF file to using the stapler. Now I happen to want a Word document, so I'll choose that as my desired output format and I'll just hit save. And now you see the results of the stapler going the opposite direction and taking a PDF file and saving it as a different format. Now let's take a look at exploding large PDF files into separate sheets and why you would want to do that. Now here I've opened a plan set and we can tell from the navigation bar that this is a 17 page PDF file. It could be a 700 page PDF file. It just depends on the documents that you're receiving from your design group and from other departments and from outside project participants. Now the problem with a large combined file is that if you're working off a shared network only one person can be in that file at one time. So if you have a group of people who need to work in this plan set together and you're not going to the cloud and using the studio session capabilities, which would be the desirable method, but you need to work on this as a team. One of the options is to take this 17 page or 700 page PDF file and explode it into separate pages. And that's super simple to do. You simply go to the thumbnail panel you can see here that it's got one of the multiple pages selected. I'm just going to right click and one of the options is extract pages. Now because I only had one page selected it assumes I only want to extract the first page but I can change that to say a custom range or the entire document pages one through however many and then I can use the menu options here to control the output. I want to extract each separate page as a separate new PDF file and my document does have good quality page labels so I will use the page labels as the names of the newly created PDF files. So based on those options I'll just hit OK and tell it where to put them. So I'm going to a folder called Desktop Exploded and I'm just going to hit go. Doesn't look like it did much did it? But it did. If I now do open we can see now where it output each and every page of that 17 page single PDF into individual PDF files. Now that is something that we can take to a network drive and we can work together on as a team again if we're not taking advantage of the studio session capabilities that would allow us to mark that up as a collective group. Now this video is not going to cover document sets and batch slip sheeting, but this is the point at which you would take advantage of those capabilities. Now that you've taken your large PDF and broken it up so that you can work on it as a team, you would simply go to document sets, you would create a new set, identifying where those source files are. So I'm going to that exploded folder and I'm going to grab all of those and then process them to make them members of a document set and then we can do all those wonderful capabilities that a document set offers us. Let's take a look at different ways of combining separate PDFs into a single PDF if you choose to do that. Well one way is to use the stapler utility. So if I minimize Bluebeam and I just launch my Windows Explorer for example 
and I go to that folder where we extracted all those pages previously. Let's say I want to collect some of them and combine them together into a single PDF. I can just click and drag or hold down the control key and selectively choose the ones that I'm interested in that I want to group together to create a large PDF from. So I'll simply do that, then right click, and right here is access to the stapler tool to either combine those documents together into a single PDF file or to convert them from whatever they are into a PDF file if I want to do that. And that is something I would use for non-PDF files. So for right now, I'm going to say combine these separate PDFs into a single PDF using the stapler. And it has all of those files. It simply wants to know where do you want to put it and what do you want to call it. And I'm going to come in here and say YouTube combined demo. And I'll just hit OK. Once again, it tells me the results of its analysis. It knows that these are all PDF files, and it's ready to staple them together into a single multi-page PDF, which is what it's done now. Now I have a brand new 11-page PDF. Now that's just one way of combining files together. A different way of combining PDF files together, if you choose to do it, is to go to File and the combine command. When I use the combine command, it automatically launches the Microsoft Windows Explorer and allows me to go out and find the files that I'm looking for. Now here's a significant difference between using combine or using the stapler application is that here, even though we've got this PDF filter, the combine tool only works with PDF files. So it's not going to give you the option of combining non PDF files. You would have to use the stapler. Here we're dealing with the process of combining files that are already in the PDF file format. So just like before, I'll randomly grab a few and hold down the control key and grab the ones I want, and I'll simply hit open. Now it opens up the dialog box that is sort of similar to the stapler application, but it's just simply showing me the PDF files that I've selected, and I'll hit OK. And just like before, now I've got a multi-page PDF. Uh, this combination was a total of 10 pages instead of 11, but you can see the differences there between the stapler and the combine tool. Lastly, I want to do both a staple and a combine function on a collection of PDF files that already have digital signatures because I think you'll be surprised by the results. I've got a folder on my desktop called signed PDFs and if I right click and do an open and I go to that location there are three files in there and if I open them up you can see what they look like. This is a signed RFI where it's been digitally signed and if I go to the signature panel you'll see it actually has two digital signatures inside of it. This is a submittal example. It's been signed once. You can see here it's got a valid digital signature and this is a signed fax. You can see it also has a valid digital signature inside of it. So I've closed all those files and now I'm going to use the combine tool to bring them together. So I'll go to the folder, I'll select them all, I'll hit open. It will tell me that, hey, there's three PDF files that you want to bring together, which we just did seconds ago. And now you're going to see the behavior of the combined utility when it detects a digitally signed document. If I hit OK, it says, oh, wait a minute, that document already has digital signatures in it. If you insist upon moving forward and combining these files together into a new PDF, it will have no choice but to strip away the digital signatures. If I hit cancel, it will stop. I have to, if I want to combine these files together, using this method, I have to hit OK and OK and OK. And when we finish that task, here we see the resulting PDF file and what were previously finished and completed digital signatures through that clear process have now been converted back to just empty signature fields. Now let's try the stapler option with those same exact three digitally signed PDF files. I'll once again go to the signed PDF folder. I'll grab all three of those. I'll right click and I'll tell it that I want to combine them together using the stapler utility. It looks similar to the combine command that we used inside of review, but you're going to see a very different behavior. I'm going to say combined with 
stapler and I'll tell it OK and I'll say go. Now you notice it didn't give me any kind of communication that there are digital signatures in this file and now that I'm in the file and I look at the multiple pages the end result is that the digital signatures have been stripped away and the signature has in essence been flattened as PDF content because now that I go into each page I'm on the signature panel and you can see the information that was previously there is no longer there. So if you are working with digitally signed PDF files and you do need to combine them together, you very much so need to understand the difference between attempting to do that with the file combined command versus using the stapler utility because one communicates with you and gives you an option and the other one simply processes it without warning and then strips it away. That's it. I hope you find this video helpful and you'll review the other videos available as well.